Senator, the pictures of children in coats shivering in Baltimore City Schools made national news. We've also had issues with the heat when the summer comes before kids get out of school, being so hot that schools have to start later, to end later, to end, or not even go to school at all. If elected governor, what would you do to improve the aging infrastructure in schools in the state so kids can stay in class? I'm the parent of two public school students in Montgomery County where we've made the investments and don't have these type of problems. We need the state to be a partner with the city to fix its infrastructure. I'm proud of the role that I've played in order to, to, to move the state's 21st century schools program forward so that we're building new schools in Baltimore City. Governor Hogan is the most powerful governor in the country because the, governor, the Constitution of Maryland gives our governor extreme budgetary authority. He could have taken action, put money into those schools. He complained about Kevin Kamenetz, he complains about the city, and he does nothing. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Jones. Yes. Uh, I guess my, my um, problem is how do you do that when some schools are just too old to put new systems into? Uh, and so um, people can talk about investing money, but, you know, where are we going to get the money, first of all? Hogan is spending a lot of money. And once again, it's not going to be an easy task to do. It's just not going to happen like that. Ms. Vigna Roger. My father and my running mate both taught at Frederick Douglass, where those kids were literally freezing in their classrooms. I remember when I was at Woodlawn High School learning in so-called temporary trailers, uh, in sweltering heat, in freezing cold, and those temporary trailers are still there today. So for me, it's about fully funding our schools. It's about rebuilding our crumbling schools. It's about recognizing that Governor Hogan is a reverse Robin Hood. He has been stealing from the poor and giving to the rich. And I'll make sure that the casino and lottery revenues go to our schools. Mr. Jaffe. I have a tutor mentor team program that is designed to give every student in the Baltimore City school system an opportunity to connect with successful people who will stay with that student, boy or girl, until that student either gets a high school uh, diploma and a job or a college diploma and a job. I'm a teacher. I think I know how to teach. And I'm saying to you, the tutor mentor program is a major, major important uh, improvement for the educational system in Baltimore City. Thank you, Mr. Jaffe. Now to Mr. Baker. Thank you. You know, the children that were freezing in the, those classrooms are Maryland children, just like the ones that are overcrowded in classrooms in Prince George's County or in Montgomery County or in Baltimore County. And for the last four years, we have gone to the governor and asked him to be a partner with the local jurisdiction to solve this problem. He's been silent. He wouldn't even meet on it. And so when something happens, he blames the local jurisdiction, what is what he does. What we need to do is have a governor that understands that we need to partner with the local jurisdiction to rebuild these classrooms and to renovate them. That's what I would do as governor. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Mr. Shea. As chair of the university system, I oversaw the 12 pu public colleges in the state who have excellent facilities. Uh, we had a construction plan, and we maintained it. Baltimore City needs the same thing. We do have a construction plan underway. And for emergencies like the failed heating system, we need an investment fund that the local jurisdiction can go to to repair it temporarily and pay it back over time. That's what we would do if the, uh, we lost our heat at our house. We would have to have upfront money to get the problem fixed, even if we had to borrow it. Baltimore City to be able to do the same thing, Thank you, Mr. and the Shea. state can help it do it. Now to Mr. Ross. Just last week, my wife and I got an email from our kids' school saying, guess what? It's going to get hot, and we don't have air conditioning. This past winter, my son, 15-year-old, in a public high school in Baltimore, when it was cold outside, it was cold inside. I moved to Baltimore 24 years ago to be a, uh, to be a public school teacher, and not much has changed. Uh, and bluntly, I don't have a lot of confidence in the Annapolis establishment who keeps talking about these issues to make any positive change. You want change, bring a former public school teacher married to an educator with three kids in Baltimore City Public Thank Schools you, to Ross. solve this problem. Mr. Jealous. Yeah. As the former head of the NAACP, I felt obligated to show up at North Avenue when our kids were freezing to talk to the parents and to talk to Sonia, the CEO, about how we move forward. As I told her, we don't need the state to give us money to fix the boilers. The boilers are so old that if we replace them with new heating systems, we'll save so much money every month, we can pay it off in just two years. All we have to do is finance it. 
I bring the heart of a civil rights leader and the mind of a business person. Thank you, Mr. And Jones. that's what we need to move forward. Ms. Irvin. Why does Baltimore continually receive second citizenship status? This question is a proverbial question. Why in Baltimore? Uh, we have the most uh, powerful congressional delegation in Washington, D.C. I asked the question right back. Where is the leadership that represents the state of Maryland, and in particular, Baltimore City? My former running mate, Kevin Kamenetz, to his great credit, was able to put $1.3 billion worth of investment and capital in Baltimore Thanks, County Irvin. to build, rebuild schools. We can do the same. Does anyone have any rebuttals on this issue? Mr. Jones. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, finding, uh, I'm, I'm having a problem because, you know, our kids are going to go back to school and there's going to be nothing in place for them in terms of air conditioning and heating because schools are old. So I don't know where the money is going to come from. Uh, schools are going to have to be rebuilt. Ms. Vignaraja, your first rebuttal. Education is the reason that I'm running. I'm the only candidate here who's the product of Maryland Public Schools from kindergarten through 12th grade, running with a lifelong teacher and former president of the Baltimore Teachers Union and daughter of two Baltimore City Public School teachers. We've got to fully fund and rebuild our crumbling schools, but we've got to have a policy from cradle to career. It's why I want to invest in universal pre-K for three and four-year-olds. I want to make sure that we provide hot and healthy breakfasts and lunches for our schools because they have become community centers. But I also want to make sure that we invest in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, Thanks, Ms. but also treat our teachers like the professionals they are. Senator Madalee, you have a rebuttal? Yes, it's very difficult when you're running with a bunch of people who have never actually been engaged in public policy in the state of Maryland. We are building 26 new schools in Baltimore City. It was an initiative I helped lead the charge on during the O'Malley-Brown administration. Governor Hogan dragged his feet on it. Every child in the Baltimore City public schools is having a free, is having a free meal today because of a, a policy and a bill I got through. The voters should know we are making progress on these issues. County Executive Baker is right. We need to spread that same approach to other jurisdictions, but we have a commitment to Baltimore. If Larry Hogan hadn't dragged his feet, Thank you, Senator. we'd be further along. Mr. Shea, I believe you have a rebuttal. Yes, th this is a perfect example of how Larry Hogan's administration has forgotten Baltimore. His lieutenant governor tweeted when this occurred, uh, if it were my children, I would be at North Avenue protesting. A and he was tweeted back, they are your children. Uh, what the governor could do and should have done is to coordinate an effort to help in a crisis like that. The university system has engineers uh, that could help. The other counties were prepared to help. A governor who leads would have coordinated that and come to Baltimore's rescue and not placed blame. Thank you, Mr. Shea. Mr. Jealous, you have a rebuttal. You know, I would like to thank Jim for recalling my tweets with uh, Boyd. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Um, and that's what you can expect from me as governor. I will always remember that all our kids are all our kids. I will always show up. I will always fight for them. That's why I got the endorsement of 74,000 teachers with 85% of their vote, the MSEA with 85% of the vote, because they know that as a civil rights leader, as a business person, as somebody who has repeatedly pulled our state together to get big things done, I will get the job done for our kids. Thanks, Make Mr. sure Jealous. that our teachers are better paid and kids have the resources to learn. Thank you, Mr. Jealous. 